So let's keep on going. Horizontal stretches this time. Ah, okay. So with horizontal stretches, remember the emphasis is on horizontal. So the emphasis has to be on the X. So looky here, looky here, look what I found right there. There's the emphasis. There's our factor, our scale factor somewhere in there. But does this work exactly the same as the scale factor we had for the vertical? Let's find out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this guy. I'm going to do something a little bit unprecedented here. I'm going to go right into the calculator here first, and then we're going to go from there. Okay. So write the equation which represents this. I'm going to show you how to do that in a, in a few seconds. I want to go right into putting this into my Y1 and then putting this into my Y2 and watch what happens. Let's see what happens to this beautiful picture that we have right here. Okay, so time to bring up the calculator. There it is. You'll notice that I've got my square root of four minus X squared. It's all good to go. Let's go into our bars here. Y1 bars, there it is, brackets. And now remember what our stretch was. Our stretch was, 4x. So we'll just put in right into the calculator right now, 4x. Now I'm so curious as to how this is going to work. Hmm. Does this mean that horizontally it's going to get four times bigger? I don't know. Let's graph it. Remember, our stretch is going to be the red one. Aha, uh -huh, there's the blue. Oh my goodness, what happened there? Well, if you think about this, this is our little mark here. Remember, we're dealing with a semicircle. So a semicircle with its wonderful formula tells you the square root of that number is the radius. Okay, so we've got a radius coming out here at 1, 2. Okay, there it is. Now, the only problem is, is when we're dealing with these things, of course, this is a TI-84, which means it's not high def screen. So what will happen is our new equation, which is this guy here, our new graph right here, doesn't come down all the way but I want to put it down all the way for you so that you can see where did that land up where did that land up that landed up at 0.5 considering that's one that's two well how did I get from from two down to 0.5 think about this for a second it has something to do with that idea of four how? How? How did it do it? Well, simple. Think about this. Our current radius is 2, so how do I get from 2 to 0.5? Well, guess what? I'm going to actually multiply this by 1 over 4. And you're probably saying, huh? Yeah, trust me, trust me, trust me. Look, 2 times 1, that's 2. 1 times 4, 4. Look at that. 2 over 4 is 1 half. That's how I got it. Oh, my. So does that mean when you're looking at a function like this that says y equals f of 4x, does that mean that this 4 is actually flipped? You bet it does. So our scale factor here is going to actually be flipped. Oh my goodness, this is wild. Absolutely wild. So, okay, let's clean this up. Let's take a look at it again. So. We've got this 4 here now on the inside, which means our scale factor is actually 1 quarter. So 1 quarter times all of our x values. One of the things I want you to notice, look at this graph again. If you look at this graph again here on our calculator, do you see this? The y's did not change. Only the x's changed. Hmm. Well, think about this. Why did that happen? We are dealing with a horizontal, right? Not a vertical. So if you write this down now, it's going to look like this. Our graph is going to be right here at a, at a half. Why? Because take this minus 2, multiply it by the scale factor, which is 1 quarter determined right there, and you get 1 half. There it is. Or in this case, negative 1 half. Same thing goes with this one. Take the 2, multiply it by the scale factor, which is in a quarter. This is going to give you 1 half again. So there's our nice little thing. And of course, our y-intercept doesn't change because we're not stretching in the vertical. We're stretching only in the horizontal. So here we go. That's what our new graph looks like. Ah, oh, cool. Now, here's the interesting thing. we got to go back to what the question was telling us and asking us to do. So let's do that right now. So let me get rid of all of this distraction. 
right? And let's leave the graph that we have right there, but now we have to write the equation which represents this. Well, how do I go about doing that? Real simple, look, the x is now 4x. So do a substitution, right? We call it replacement, remember? So here we go. This is 4 minus 4x, and then we're going to square the whole lot. Huh? Okay, wait, 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 wait. This gets even better. Square root of 4 minus, okay, so what's 4x squared? It's not 4x squared. It's 16x squared. You have to include the number with that. So what I'm saying then here is that this value right here is actually this black graph right there. Well, you're probably saying, oh, yeah? Prove it. Okay, I will. Let me clean up the calculator first, and then I'll come back to you. Hold on. All right, so what I've got here, I want to show you. There's my graphing calculator. Now, I put in, I put in the little bars here this little extension onto the graph, just to show it coming down to the 0.5 value. So that's gonna be there forever and ever. Watch this though. What I wanna prove is I wanna prove that that equation is actually what we wrote it out, out to be and what we determined it to be. So I'm gonna go, okay, second square root. I'm gonna put my four minus, and remember it's 16 now, 16 X squared. Okay, so it's the 16x squared. So honestly, what you should see then is this red line here being replaced by the black line. It's going to be fast. Watch this. Ready? Hit graph. Go. Boom. It happened so fast. That's one of the reasons why I put these little tails on here so you can see that that was actually the same graph that we had before. Look at that. Isn't that cool? I love this. This is so neat. So we learned a lot just by playing around with our calculators. So let's go back to this. Sketch the graph. Well, we did that. We did the equation. Let's talk about this now. Let's talk about the rest of the question. The rest of the question says, describe how the number four in this equation affects things. Number one affects the general shape. Of course, if you think about this now, remember, we're doing a horizontal stretch. So if we're thinking about it, it was here, but it's now here. Look what it's away from. It's away from the y-axis. So this, in fact, is a horizontal stretch about the y-axis. So we'll write that down. A horizontal stretch of one quarter... So we got to remember to take this number and flip it. So it's a horse, horizontal stretch of one quarter about the y-axis. That's the important part as well. Okay, so what else? What happened to the x-intercepts? Well, think about what the x-intercept was. We did this before. The x-intercept was minus 2, right? It's at minus 2, 0. So since we're doing a horizontal, we're working with the x values, and we just have to multiply that by a quarter, right? So we find out the intercepts are actually 0 0.50 0, and negative 0 0.50. Our x-intercepts changed from here, multiplied by a quarter, and here, multiplied by a quarter, to this point and that point. Y-intercept, unchanged. Isn't that interesting how some of these things are very similar to what we already did with the verticals? Okay? And then using VARS, we already showed you how to do that on uh, as we were developing this particular thing. So it's kind of neat to see all of this, isn't it? It's a little bit different, but... Once you get the hang of it, now that we know we got to flip that B value, this is going to be a walk in the park. Bring it on, baby.